So in a previous video, I was sampling from a small population. In this video, I'm going to be sampling from a large population. And there's an important difference between those two. So the population of Australia is uh, 25 million. And let's come up with some characteristics for them. That 70% of Australians own a pet. And I'm going to take a sample, a sample of five people. Now, in uh, sampling from a small population, what I did next was draw a tree diagram. Now, this was from a previous video, a tree diagram here of left and right handed. And importantly, this tree diagram is without replacement because you're pulling out uh, a person from a population of 10. And then obviously there's only nine people left to pick the next person and the eight people next to pick the next person. So you would think that for our sample from the Australian population, we would need to do something similar. Pick a sample of five, but this tree diagram is just a sample of two because I'm just trying to prove a point here. Okay, let's look at the probability first of the first person in our survey having a pet. There are 25 million people in Australia, and I said that 70% of them have pets. Um, that means that 17.5 million people have a pet. So our probability, if we write it as a fully expanded fraction, is 17.5 million over 25 million. Now, the problem comes with our next step here, because if we're doing this without replacement, then the probability of the next person having a pet would be 17,499,999 out of 24,999,000. 999. And you can imagine that if I'm doing this for a sample of five, and I have to draw five fractions that are all like that, and I need to do them for all the branches, that is going to get really, really complicated. But 17,500,000 as a decimal, uh, uh, so, sorry, 17.5 million over 25 million as a decimal is 0.7. What about this next fraction here? My calculator tells me that that fraction is 0.69999987. That is really, really close to 0.7. So close that we may as well pretend that it is. And that's what it comes down to when it comes to sampling from a large population. Sampling from a large population, you can assume you are doing it with replacement. Uh, that is, the probability doesn't change from trial to trial to trial. And in this case, because there's success or failure, pet or no pet, and because the probability is not tra uh, changing, we can really just assume that it is a binomial probability. And binomial probabilities are way, way easier to work with than this mess. The question might be, create a probability distribution which summarizes the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. That's a real mouthful here. But what we're looking for is to create a table that looks like this. I uh, might need one more row there. Um, and then we can fill it in as, uh, as so. Number of people with pets in sample. All right, so I'm taking a sample of five people. So there could be zero people, one, two, three, four, or all five of them might have pets. Uh, now, here is my sample proportion, which we call p hat. And we're going to write in our sample proportions here. So 0% of the population, or 0% of the sample has a pet, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 100% of the uh, sample has a pet. Okay, so I'm going to need my calculator now to do this next bit. Uh, now, stat mode, distribution, this is a binomial now, uh, and we're going to do a binomial PD, so we can fill in all of this. So uh, we're taking a sample of five people, the number, sorry, we're looking for uh, zero successes, a sample of five people, the probability of success is 0.7, and we get 2.43 times 10 to the 3. So 0 0.0024. Uh, next up, or 243, 2, let's say. Okay, next up, uh, we can do that for all of these now. So one trial, and we'll get a number for that 0 0.0284, 0 0.0284. 
four, and I can fill in all of these other ones using exactly the same technique. Two successes. Now that we've got that, we can do a question that's a little bit like this. Find the probability that less than 63% of people in the sample have a pet. Um, now that's become something like this. Uh, find the probability that P is less than 63, which is 0.63. Okay, now what's that going to be equal to? Well, that's going to be equal to uh, a sample proportion of 0 plus a sample proportion of 0 0.2 plus a sample proportion of 0.4 plus a sample proportion of 0.6. So it's going to be from, from there down. Okay, so having a proportion of 0.8 isn't. Um, so just adding that number, that number, that number, and that number is going to give me the probability that the sample proportion is less than 0.63. This is an answer of 0.4717. Um, now, there is another way to do this without drawing our little um, probability distribution there. We could have just gone into our calculator, gone into stat mode, distribution, binomial, binomial CD, a cumulative distribution. And we could have made our lower zero, our upper three, and our number of trials five and our probability 0.7. Now, you need to be aware that you need to be able to figure out what uh, that number is. Is it zero, one, two, or three? And it's that decimal there which allows us to know. So if it's less than 0.63, you need to know what your sample proportion is. Okay, so we click there and we get the same answer that we got right there. Don't gloss over this. The way that I've been coming up with this P hat value of 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 is just um, taking whatever that X value is and uh, dividing it by the sample. So in this particular case, uh, P hat is going to be equal to X over 5, where the X is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 0 divided by 5 is 0, 1 divided by 5 is 0.2, 2 divided by 5 is 0.4, 3 divided by 5 is 0.6, 5 is our sample size. So that's how I'm coming up with those values there. Now if all of this feels very familiar, I really hope it does. This is really just binomial distribution being applied to a very narrow thing, sampling from a large population. So as long as you understand how to do binomial distributions, you should also know how to take a sample from a large population.